Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here for a good review on Let's Go to Prison. It's a comedy that will make you crack up. Had me cracking up so much, I said, let's do a video on this. This is pretty cool, it's called Let's Go to Prison. Let me give you the premise of the show. This guy, John, in and out of prison. In and out of prison, and he goes in front of this hard judge. And this hard judge is just an asshole, and we had one of those too, I remember one like that. You know, my judge in federal prison was Hang'em High Giles. Wasn't a bad guy, but it was just what he was. Everybody knew who he was. So anyway, he conspires to get this judge afterwards. Let's watch what happens. Do you know there are over two million Americans behind bars? That's a little larger than the population of Houston. It is true. It's... Every year there are enough children born in prison. 2.3 million people in, in prison. If I had a nickel for every time I've been incarcerated, I'd have 15 cents. It all started when I was eight years old. I stole the publisher's clearinghouse prize patrol van. Thought there'd be a million bucks inside. Where's the check? <laughs> Is that funny what he stole at eight? They caught me when I tried to cash the giant check. Oh, that's hilarious. That was the first time I met Judge Nelson Biederman, who changed my life with the magic word. Guilty. The reason we have all these laws and rules to live by is so that we can help guide all the little boys with big dreams and a chance for a bright future, and so that we could help protect them from worthless scum like you. Look at him telling that what an asshole judge. Worthless scum like you to an eight-year-old. I got out again when I was 24. Then that same asswipe Judge Biederman sent me back when I was 24 and a half. Four to seven years. And next time you steal a car, Mr. Lashitsky, check to see if there are lights on the roof. <laughs> you like that one? I'm out again, and I intend to spread the pain around. Starting with his honor himself. You know, he is a moron for doing these crimes. So, to be mad at the judge, I don't know about that now. Look what he finds out. And how long ago did you say that he died? <laughs> he died. <laughs> uh, this guy's a mess. This is what makes it so funny, this, this show. He is a mess. Holy shit. Nelson Biederman IV. I guess when one door slams shut, another one swings open. Look, he's setting up the judge as kid. The three scariest words in the English language. Trial by jury. Juries are made up of 12 people who are so dumb they couldn't even okay. think up an excuse to get out of jury duty. He's right. Juries aren't, you know, they say juries of your peers. I don't think that's true. I, I actually believe they should have professional jurors. I really do. And they could grade them by uh, compassionate, empathy, or punishment as well, obviously. Some people just don't want to be there. They'll say guilty just to get the hell out of there. They weren't smart enough, like he said, to get out of jury duty, so. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, we have, Your Honor. We, the jury, find the defendant, Nelson Biederman, guilty. You mean guilty? Oh, yeah. And he's the foreman. <laughs> Nelson Biederman, you've been found guilty of felony assault. I sentence you to three to five years in the Rossmore State Correctional Facility. I know it's a movie, but you know how I think. Sorry about this, guys. You don't get sentenced right there after you're convicted. You have a sentencing hearing. You get what they call a PSI, which is pre-sentence investigation or PSR, pre-sentence report, which is done by the probation department. Now, they're going to look at your background. They're going to look at your prior history. They're going to look at your connections in a community. And they do that to give the judge the best information for sentencing you, just to let you know what they do. So it's not just, bang, go to three to five. That will never happen, obviously. Hey, John Lashitsky. What's your name? Now, just to let you know, he's in the band with him. He committed a crime to go to prison for it with him. That's why he did that. Because he, he was so bitter against the judge, and then the judge's kid, that he ended up going to prison. Which is kind of a funny concept. Or, or real dedicated. Tell you what. We should be cellmates. Doesn't happen that way either. I don't snore, and uh, I'm a pretty quiet masturbator. Hell, I'll even give you the top bunk. Bottom bunks are more preferred. Not top bunks. Don't let anybody kid you. They wouldn't be able to sell together if they wanted to. You don't know what unit you're going to. And you see the way their hands are? That wouldn't be either. You, you're on belly chains. 
you actually have the belly chain so you couldn't lift. You can only lift to about here. Uh, the warden never came out either. He didn't give a fuck. Welcome to your new home. If any one of you is innocent, just raise your hand. You'll be free to go. Oh, yeah. You'll be free to go to the hole. I have a notoriously dry sense of humor. A uh, typical asshole warden. All right. Here's how it's going to work. They always make them the asshole. I guess they know. They always have to make the wardens an asshole, and I get that. But they don't ever come there. Cell 433. I want you to You do go through. through processing, and you go to laundry, you go everywhere to get what you need. You do do this. One Metallica t-shirt. Master of puppets. One money clip. I'd like to, uh, room with Biederman. Empty. <laughs> Cell number 433. Sign right there. I love the way they're setting them up for this. But nobody's going back to prison for revenge. People think they can't imagine what it feels like to be in prison. It's easy. You know that bolt of fear you get when you see a cop's flashing red lights in your rear view? No, that's the truth. That feeling of cops behind you. Imagine feeling that 24 hours a day while you're surrounded by convicted killers who feel the exact same way. Oh, look at this. And this is true. People crack. People do. It, 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 and the weight of prison on you is just unbelievable. Now, it was funny about crying. If you saw a weak person, they're predator and there's prey. And you're prey then. Now, don't get me wrong. I watched a bunch of killers cry over a, a fucking movie. And if a person said a word to them, they're fucking... They could get shot, or uh, not shot, obviously, in jail, or get fucked up. But if you saw someone just come to prison and be like that, every predator in that prison would be vying for that guy. First in the manipulation way, and then in the violent way, like I talked about many times. What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do in prison? This is it. We're right in the thick of the action. We hang out here, go to lunch. Come back, hang out some more, go to dinner. And it's not just going to eat and come back and hang out and eat and come back and hang out. You end up becoming part of the system. You figure out a hustle. You got friends. You go talk to them. You read a lot. I used to go to the library. I got my law degree, you know, paralegal degree. But that's not so accurate. So you actually just become part of the system. You, you get a life. You go work out in the morning. You, you know, monotony can come in there. If you don't, if you let it, but if it doesn't, if you don't let it, it won't come in there either. You, you have a lot to do. Don't get me wrong. You don't want to do a lot of it, but you have a lot to do. What's on the menu today, good sir? That's me. That ain't me. That is funny. You don't go up to him and say, what's on the menu? First of all, you go through a line and you get what you're going to get, period. End of story. The trays are just passed down like a cafeteria. And that's the end of that. Now, you might know the guy and he might give you a little extra because you know him, he's a buddy or whatever. That happens. But not like this. See those badasses over there? They're the White Kingdom. They pretty much run the roost. He who controls the smack controls the joint. By he, I mean him. Leonard. Don't be fooled, though. Underneath all those swastikas, he's a real prick. It is true what he said, and I'm going to stop it. Drugs and people who run them and the groups that run them, they get the what they want. They're going to have the most money, or the, and money is stamps, or back cigarettes in a day, but stamps. So they're going to have everything. You're 100% right. They're going to have all the, the money, the drugs, and the, you want to call them punks? Uh, you know how I am about trying to be the right way. Uh, but it is what it is in prison. At exactly 12.15, stand up would push their books down onto the floor. <laughs> Old LaRoche almost had a heart attack. I said, oh, ah, 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 ah. You, Fish, who started this shit? He did. First of all, let me tell you, if he was standing and everybody in that chow hall would have been interviewed if a guy got stabbed like that. And nobody would just say, he did it. If he did that, he's going to be off the yard, he's a, a snitch, and he's going in a hole. 
and then he's getting transferred and he's going to have the worst prison experience of his life for whatever many years he's in. Because you just don't do that. He told him to stand because he knew there was a hit. That happens. And he knew what time it was going to be. And they, they have an exact time this guy's going to have. So get away. Obviously get away. And maybe not be uh, scrutinized the way you were sitting there like you know what's going on. That was the problem there. Just remember, number one rule in prison. Always look out for your cellmate. That is true. You look out for each other, your friends in prison. Let me say what my number one rule in prison is. When I used to go to a prison, I would first thing I would do, I don't know if it's the number one thing, but I would look to see what everybody's wearing on their feet. If they had flip-flops on, I didn't give a shit. This is a pussy prison. If they got boots, steel toe boots and sneakers ready for a fight, I knew what type of prison it was. But my number one rule is respect. You respect everybody because you don't know what they've been through and you don't know who they are you respect everybody and they'll respect you always remember that that's the number one rule in prison oh look at the shower room this is not how it happens either and have about prison loss of liberty eating bad food claustrophobia loneliness none of them compare to the prospect of being fucked up the ass <laughs> so what's a beautiful white boy like you doing in a place like this Three to five. We had that in prison. Uh, we had a guy named, well, there was a guy we called Mountain. Huge, huge, six, six, 300 pounds. Hey, I like you. He said that, you were in trouble. But we didn't have that group shower like that. And in a maximum security prison, that would be a killing field for sure. And it wouldn't have that many people in it, obviously. I did in Lewisburg, we had four, four or four four showers, two and two, uh, one and one, one and one, and that was only in the holding cell in J Block in Lewisburg. But most prisons have a different setup than this because they know what's coming. No rear entry. I don't mean to sound ungrateful, John, but did you have to stick your finger up my ass? <laughs> no, probably not. He just stuck his finger up his ass. That is hilarious. You know, just understanding this whole entire situation a little bit better because a lot of people ask questions on the shower situations obviously there is places people do go to have sex and that's in the showers but usually we had in the prison we had a door a heavy steel door it didn't lock none of the doors locked but you could close it and then we even had a curtain that went across the little black or they had a little square window in the heavy steel door and this is in atlanta and guys yes would go in there and they'd fuck and whatever so that does happen but that kind of situation i never saw People are more protective of everything. Dear new pen. I've seen many people do that. And they usually do it for dates though. I'm 30 years old and I've been not for the end date. In this hellhole, I've had my ass kicked so many times, my shit has footprints in it. Anyway, thanks for listening. I'll have to sign off now as someone is pissing on me. Let me tell you something that that, you know, I, that pissing incident got me a little bit upset. And it got me upset because of what happened to me, being urinated on by guards and uh, being strapped down naked, four-pointed. Boy, that gave me chills, even on a comedy movie. And I know it's a comedy movie, but it gave me chills. And so did it give me chills with the kid with the reading the letter because I had kids. So if that doesn't touch you, something should. That's a message from Leonard. He gets out of the hole today. Let me tell you something. That guy would not be on the yard and they would have transferred him. First of all, the guy wouldn't be on the yard who snitched like that. I'm gonna go talk to Leonard, reason with him as one adult to another, apologize to him and put this entire thing behind us. <laughs> I can't see how you can go wrong. Mr. Leonard. Oh, this, this is good. Mr. Leonard. I know that we did not start under the best of circumstances. So I just want to say how sorry I am for the misunderstanding. <laughs> oh, he stabbed him. He would have hit him in the nuts though. First of all, the forks we had were plastic. A better plastic than the little white ones, but they were plastic, just to let you know. When you're already in jail and you break the rules, you think, what the hell are they gonna do? Throw me in jail? The answer is yes. It's called isolation. The hole. In the hole, it's impossible to tell the difference. And the shoe, it's called. Forever. Your mind plays tricks on you. You get depressed. You get disoriented. <laughs> 
had enough of yourself already? I don't blame you. Let's go. How long was I in there? Two days. <laughs> He was in there two days. I was in the hole for 11 straight months. I was in the hole three years out of my time in prison. The, the hole is a bad memory, and it's a bad memory for anybody. Don't get me wrong, anybody. Are you holding up, Nelson? You're not thinking about doing yourself in, are you? I need something that will kill me. Oh, it's like that. I don't condone that, my friend. Oh, God, look at this guy's cell. He's going in to get drugs. We had a guy who I just found out from Massey, the guard, he died, Mike Sarga, and he was an old guy like this, had a cell that was unbelievably, when they shook his cell down, I felt so bad for him. The next time we interview Massey, I'm gonna talk about Mike Sarga. It's a shame, man, because he ended up dying. He ended up getting put in prison for life for a conspiracy which was bullshit. What a nice guy. He really was a nice guy. He was older back then, so he's probably 60 something years old, 20 years ago. So I'm sure that's what happened. But he had a cell, something not like this, but close. I mean, he had every, oh, shit everywhere and hidden everywhere. It was so funny. Oh, 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 Eureka. Oh yeah. This is something called boat cleaner. I could choose to clean boats with. <laughs> what a rocket sight this is, guy. Give me the boat cleaner and a needle. We never had needles like that. We made the needle. They took, they broke a needle off at the uh, medical line, and what they would do: get a glove, a piece of plastic tubing, melt it, put it in, put the glove as a suction cup, and that was the needle. They called it a rig that they made in prison. <clears throat> you know. Times like this, when I think about something my dad once said to me. He's gonna kill the guy with a with lighter fluid, but that we didn't have lighter fluid like that in prison either. Ah! He's running like a pussy. Oh, oh look at that! Well, he huh? You don't need this where you're going. I'm begging you. Don't do it. And you would never do that. Don't throw me into the briar patch. Now he's the badass. Doesn't happen either. Take up, Peterman! Robots, wait! Let's go. <laughs> so, Mr. Biederman, do you feel you're ready to re-enter society? Absolutely. Prisons made me a new man. Oh, I'm going to end that there. He says, prison made me a new man. Denied. But you got to watch the movie. It's a pretty good movie. But anyway, have a great day, everybody. I wanted to thank you again for all your support and everything you guys do with this channel. Uh, let's keep it going. Let's, let's build it higher and higher and bigger and quicker and faster. And uh, I have a Judge show coming out. I can't wait to show you. You guys are going to love it. And it's going to be real interesting. So I'm the judge. Think of that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Stay strong, everybody. Please remember to make good choices out there. Life is too short to make stupid choices and lose your life to prison. Watch it here. Live through me. Don't make the choices I make. Have a great day, everybody. Much love. Much respect. Larry out.